Hi, my name is Bill Schaefer with a book review of The Courage to Create by Rollo May. If you're a painter, a poet, an artist of any kind, you will want to read this book. In Freudian psychology, artistic creativity is typically viewed as a neurotic adaption to a loss early in life. I can't think of a more negative description of creativity. And this is why you'll want to read the book, The Courage to Create. Rollo May has an entirely different thesis, is that creativity is not a feeble neurotic adaption, but creative activity is what gives life meaning. It's one of the highest and greatest achievements of humankind. Creativity is wrestling with the gods. Creativity is how we imitate the gods. Creativity is how we imitate the one creator. The book is written in a very literary style, and the author has a tremendous command of classical reference material to draw upon. And very soon you realize that although the reading seems superficial, he's touching on some very deep and profound issues. And he's using the literature from history of mythology and drama and literature to illustrate these points. The author brings up several significant and important subjects. The first one that struck me is the idea of calmness and peace versus agitation and conflict. And unfortunately, agitation and conflict leads to more creativity. One test of this, the author relates, of transcendental meditation subjects. And compared to a control group, immediately following transcendental meditation, the subjects in the meditative group had significantly fewer and less creative ideas. I found that interesting because TM advertises more creativity, increased creativity, but that seems to not be the case. As beneficial as transcendental meditation might be. He brings up the point that creativity is bringing something from nothing. That in that way we imitate the gods, that we're wrestling with the gods to bring something out of nothingness. It is a pure creative act of our own mind and our own intellect. And another idea he brought up that I really like is that creativity occurs after an extended period of effort and during a period of rest. And he has a number of examples from history of people who were trying to solve a problem, a math problem, a science problem, or an artistic creation with no success and it was only once that they relaxed were doing something trivial that the answer popped into their mind and this seems to be a major component of creativity an immense desire tremendously hard work and then sometime later on the subconscious will provide the answer during a period of relaxation and in fact albert einstein said why is it that I get all my best ideas in the morning while I'm shaving? In chapter 3, the author describes creativity and the unconscious. And here he describes some of the features of the creative breakthrough. And it seems to be fairly universal. There's always kind of a breakthrough aha experience when the idea comes to you unexpected. And it is usually accompanied by a sensation of vivid awareness. The whole world becomes more alive and vivid. You become more aware of the colors and the shapes and the sounds and more present in the world than you ordinarily are. Everything seems, quote, more real. This always occurs as a result of a real commitment. It's an issue, it's a problem that you've been thinking about for quite a while. It's of extreme interest and passion for you to work on this issue, 
to work with this problem. And it's central to your waking life to think about this idea. The last thing is it usually occurs in a transition from hard work to relaxation. In the time after a period of long hard work when you're not really thinking about the issue anymore and you're doing something trivial, the answer will come to you. A part I enjoyed of the book is he describes the famous artist Gio Cometti during a portrait painting session. And he describes the part of the creative process as abject terror, uncertainty, and fear. And this I find to a great degree that when I'm trying to solve a problem, it's terrifying and I don't think I ever will. And this is a big problem for me in visual effects because I'm given the most difficult problems and the entire time I'm working on it, I do not think that I will be able to solve it. And I'm not a really pleasant person to work around because of the complexity of the issue. But I almost always have solved it fine. And frequently, my solution gets approved on the first review. Nevertheless, it was really amusing to read a sitter's description of the artist Giacometti while he was painting a portrait and the agony that he went through talking about painting the portrait. I enjoyed reading that. The author presents an extended section on the Oracle at Delphi and uses the process of receiving inspiration from the Oracle historically as an analogy of the creative process. Whereas I'm not sure exactly how this fits in the book, it was a fascinating chapter. I love history and it was fascinating to read in more depth about the operations of the Oracle at Delphi, which was active for over a thousand years in the classical world. Another section I really liked was the next section on limits. And this was really educational for me when I read it, that creativity is born of the limits. It's frequently the limits on creativity that result in the most inspirational manifestations of creativity. For example, in poetry, being constrained to a certain meter or rhyme forces the author into more creative solutions to finding sentences that fit in the overall form. The last chapter in the book is called Passion for Form. And he touches on the idea that it is the beauty of form that gives meaning to a lot of the creative process. That wanting to get a complete form is an inspiration for finishing the creative process. However, the book just kind of peters out. And I want to see a grand conclusion that summarizes everything at the end of the book. Instead, he just introduces his thesis, brings up a few related examples, and then before you know it, the book is over. And it really wants to have some type of conclusion to wrap it up, so you feel like you've read a real book. The Courage to Create, a scholarly work with numerous references from classic literature. Rollo May has described the creative process in an inspiring and thoughtful way. Anyone who is an artist or working in the creative arts will find this book interesting and engaging. Therefore, I highly recommend reading The Courage to Create by Rollo May. Thank you and leave your comments below.